Know your true self, and you will know the true story. Know your whole self, and you will know the wholeness of the truth. All is one. There is no other. Thus it always was, and thus it always shall remain. We once experienced only oneness. One being, with no divisions or separate parts. There was no time, no space, nothing other than the us. When you are only one, there is only you, nothing else to interact with. In order to experience interaction, to experience being with someone else, to experience play, the one divided within itself, duplicating the one, thus creating many ones, many beings, within the one. Still one being, now in many parts were we, capable of pretending to be other than one, while still being one in harmonious consciousness. By vibration was it done, division, multiplication, and expansion of the one. Set into motion, were vibrations throughout the universe. On it went, dividing, multiplying, creating new aspects of vibration through the overtones of harmony and ripples of the interacting vibratory reflections. Created this many new things, and also initiated the time and space. Each of us were the entity of the one, the entirety of the one, the dark, the light, the stars, the planets, all of us macrocosms of the one. In clusters, groups, we were in all directions. We being the entire universe. We then roamed ourselves, as consciousnesses, as beings, that cannot be described or understood by the present earth consciousness. Yet describe I will try, as best I can. Our existence was, as close as you can comprehend in your present consciousness. As beings of spirit, energy, light, star groups, solar systems, the groups that be the foundation of vibratory frequency in creating the physical plane, of matter, the appearances there, and that which forms the bodies of that plane. Unattached, ever flowing with the flows of the universal one were we, enjoying all the wonders of our new creation. Our consciousness, both semi-separate from, yet still one with, the entire creation of the universe, allowed us the experiencing of new and different things. But within this new creation were the material planes. These were the realms in which existed the most dense, or slowest spectrum of vibrations. There were many material planes throughout the universe, the earth being just one. The story I am about to tell, is only of those who manifested in the realm of the earth but others of us manifested in the material planes of other solar systems. Some are now of the higher consciousness, kindred beings are they from other worlds. But some from other worlds are of the selfish and evil. When we came upon the world of the earth, we had no comparison, no experience of the like, no expectation of what would be. The first group of us to discover this material plane were in awe of the new sensations it offered. This first group, or first wave of souls to materialize, was the first to enter the vibrational spectrum of matter, in the time-space of the earth. They experienced such pleasure from playing in it, that they projected themselves deeply into matter, in thought forms that were the most stimulating, the most sensational, those of the animal realm creations. In creating these bodies, assorted aspects of different animals were often combined to achieve what they thought would be very desirable blends, bird head slash human bodies, horse body slash human head, goat head slash human body, fish tail slash human torso, and many, many more variations. These would much later become known in Greek and Roman mythology by many names, centaurs, minotaurs, mermaids, etc. Unfortunately, these ones, our close kindred, had no way of knowing that as soon as they hardened their thought forms into matter, becoming these creatures, that they would lose all awareness, all consciousness, 
of most things beyond their new bodies and their immediate environment. They became trapped in these forms. The seven ports, chakras, were closed, cutting off their contact of the full vibrational spectrum. And thus all their perceptions and interactions were thus based only on the limited vibrations they could detect through only five vibrational sensors. These five senses could only monitor very limited frequency bands of the full universal vibrational spectrum, and even in that, they focused on only those vibrations relevant to the material plane of existence, leaving these humanimals without any senses of the spiritual planes of existence cut off from the consciousness of the one and thus the very universe itself the humanimals experienced animal consciousness but the beings inhabiting these forms were not animals and originally of angelic consciousness the combination of the consciousness that was meant to be of a higher form blended with the animal consciousness was a very inharmonious and disruptive mix they lost the purity of animal consciousness and the purity of spiritual consciousness. So this was a new kind of consciousness that was foreign to the animal realm. This new consciousness was separate consciousness, and was of a fixed focus nature, and reverse polarity in comparison to the consciousness of the one. Intelligence was also severely curtailed in the humanimals. Being similar to the intelligence of the types of animals that they were modeled upon, but again, this was adversely afflicted by the negative effects of separate consciousness. Thus were the humanimals stuck in this limited plane, in limited forms, with limited intelligence, in a new limited consciousness. They didn't fit in anywhere, they didn't belong in the spiritual realms any longer, nor did they belong in Earth's nature. Thus their introduction into the Earth plane was also disruptive and polluting to the flow of nature. Those of us who did not project ourselves into matter, were quite aware of the predicament and fates that had befallen our kin. From the vantage point of our natural, etheric state of existence, we were still of one mind, one being. Seeing part of us in such matter-bound prisons as the humanimals had become trapped in, was very painful, after all, the creatures were us, were our sister brothers, and their misfortune was our misfortune. In the terminology of some, they might also be called the first fallen angels, but they fell not of ill intent, but by virtue of ignorance of the purest kind. We decided to save them, no matter what the cost. We knew we could only do this if we could function on the same vibratory plane as they, so we too projected ourselves into thought forms that could function within the realms of the Earth Mother led by the great being who became known as the Atlantean Emilios, then known later as Thoth, and eventually well known as Jesus much later, the second wave of our entering into the plains of the Earth Mother began. Careful to stay as beings free from the lower vibratory planes, or hardening into the matter, we projected ourselves into the material plane with thought form bodies that were semi-etheric, matter, but not matter, Thus were we still able to function on all vibrational frequencies of the universal spectrum, free to enter or leave the limited spectrum of the material plane at will. But most importantly, we were very intent upon maintaining our consciousness of oneness, so that we would not fall to the same fate as the humanimals. The manifestation was achieved more or less successfully. And as we became subject to the vibratory conditions which affect this realm, we saw the numerological representations of the physical plane, 2 and 5, appear in many aspects of our manifestation. For example, the beginnings of the five races occurred. And later, the two sexes, each being having five appendages, two legs, two arms, one head, with two eyes, two ears, two legs, two of many organs, etc., and five fingers slash toes on the arms and legs. Despite our precautions and great efforts, some of us still fared not as well as others, losing more consciousness and hardening more than others. Those who manifested in Atlantis with Emilios fared the best, but for many, 
this was to be short-lived. Until this time, we were composite beings, macrocosms of the one. Our bodies were not as they are now. Our male and female elements had not yet separated, as composite beings we each had one body that contained both sexes, rather than the male and female bodies we have now. The sexes then, being just the inner and outer elements, and outflowing and inflowing parts of our whole being. These were soulmate groups as they are called now. Each composite being had different numbers of parts, a different number of soulmates, each part a being itself, but fully as one with the whole being. We were like beings in which planets orbit a star, or the atoms of matter in which elements of different polarity, male and female, are attracted to each other, each finding a place where they harmoniously function together within the whole, as one entity, one being. As such composite beings, we existed in a state of unselfish love, constant flow, outflowing slash giving fully of our life energies to each element of ourselves, within ourselves, and receiving within ourselves, and without, in our relationship with the one, which each composite being also orbited, creating the even greater, ultimate composite being of the one. Now, for the first time, some of us had begun to separate within ourselves, manifesting as individual bodies representing the polarity elements. Bodies of opposite polarities then came into existence, male or female sex. The work of freeing the humanimals began. It was arduous and complex, but it proceeded well, at first. Unfortunately, the contamination of separateness slowly began to creep in. We started slowly tasting many of the things that had instantly trapped the humanimals. Divisions began to occur between Atlanteans, over opinions, and desires. The next symptom of our disintegration was upon us, and this disease would eventually bring down Atlantis. Even in this higher state of manifestation, which we thought would keep us safe from the loss of consciousness that plagued the humanimals, some of us succumbed to the lure of material sensation. Like the drug addict would behave with an unlimited supply of drugs, we began to delve more into the indulgences of this plane until we were lost in it, drowning in it. In the frenzy of our addiction to physical sensations, we disregarded all our precautions and wariness. Soon our thoughts and actions had collected matter from this material world that surrounded us, and hardened our thought forms, making us matter-bound also. Our consciousness simultaneously slipped, and our gradual loss of consciousness of oneness gave way to that new consciousness of predominant separateness. The consciousness of predominant separateness was foreign to us, a totally new experience. And along with this new consciousness, came new emotions, some pleasurable and some painful. Strange new things like greed, envy, lust, excitement, fear, desire. Some of us vigorously strived to maintain a semblance of our consciousness of oneness, along with the new consciousness, and we were able to experience the emotions without being ruled by them. Such were the children of the law of one. But others lost or chose to deliberately suppress, even a glimmer of awareness of the one. These beings became lost, and enmeshed in separateness. Outside of the consciousness of oneness, they became subject to being tossed to and fro by the tides of emotional onslaught, and ultimately became devoted to personal power and pleasure in this physical plane. These beings became known as the sons of Belial, even if they were female. Take heed of the ancient warnings and prophecies about the Belialians. Lizard-like are they, not in apparent physical description, but in spirit form, in the heart, in the soul. Beware even now of your lizard kin, for they rule the world with greed and without compassion, while maintaining appearance of good and righteous. As men, and women, do these sons of Belial walk the earth, Model citizens. Successful leaders who are the envy of the uninitiated. 
while some appear disgusting and strange to the eye, look not to see the ugliness of the belly aliens with your eye, for some are handsome to the eye. See you will not, their true lizard-like appearance with your earthly eyes. See their true nature, you will, only with the inner eye, or in glimpses from the corner of the eye. When this division came within the people of Atlantis, many things went awry, and turmoil began. To function harmoniously, beings need to have omnipresence, their vision must include the whole picture. But when the attention is fixed and focused in the reverse polarity of separation, all that is seen are parts of the whole picture, those parts that are not filtered out by the illusions of separate consciousness. It is a limited view at best, and often is a lens distorted by emotions. Without awareness of the whole picture, and the guidance of a coordinating force, actions become uncoordinated with others. To understand this better, imagine how well your present day body would function if each limb did not have awareness of what the other limbs were trying to do. Or if each limb wanted to do different things from each other, no longer working together as one. Now imagine further, Imagine this lack of coordination keeping your eyes, ears, fingers, tongue, and mouth, from working together as a team. Now consider the chaos and eventual destruction that would occur if every single cell in your body operated with no unified guiding force that keeps them coordinated with the whole. In fact, that's what cancer is. You see, this became the problem with our very lives once some of us lost consciousness of the one. Such uncoordinated independent activity becomes a logical evolution when such a separation occurs and one is left with only an awareness of separateness. Thus it came to be that the two Atlantean socio-political groups evolved, with one very essential difference. The children had a consciousness of both separateness and oneness. The Belialians rejected the consciousness of oneness entirely, and maintained only a consciousness of separateness. The differences of opinion between the two groups were great and many, including environmental issues, but nothing was more of an issue than the morality of how the humanimals were to be dealt with. Those of the law of one, remembering still that we originally came to this plane just to help release the humanimals from matter bondage, continued trying to free our trapped siblings. The kindred also created ways, known to the initiate, to aid in the maintenance of the consciousness of oneness, so we would never lose sight of our goals. But the Belialians wanted to use the humanimals for their own comforts and pleasures. Since those of us from the second wave were of greater consciousness than the humanimals, and could still function on higher planes to some extent, we had powers of the mind, both spiritual and psychological, that made it easy for us to control humanimals. The children refused to use their abilities to control the humanimals, while the Belialians relished the power, and wanted to use them as slaves. The other great division in opinion between the children and the Belialians was over the environment as it is called now. The Belialians used methods of generating power, like electrical power, that were dangerous and destructive to the earth. Thus did the great conflict between the children and the Belialians of Atlantis begin. A conflict between light and dark, between selfishness, and unselfish love. And the conflict that was, continued throughout history, and continues to this day. The Belialians' lust for power and lack of care or awareness of the balances of nature, led to the destruction of Atlantis. This was due in great part to the abuse of their power generation plants. When the final destructions occurred, Grand Master Thoth then led us to the land of Chem, to complete the great work of evolving the humanimals. As gods were we to the people of Chem, and yet did they think the humanimals to be gods. And so it was done. The humanimals were brought to human levels, to choose their path from there. Yet, there are the residual effects. Have you not seen the humans that look much like pigs, or goats, or this or that animal still? These were they. But even though the humanimals were no more, 
the Belialians had not lost their taste for slavery. Thus the great conflict with the Belialians was far from over. And still continues on. With the children of the law of one as lamps. Illuminating the path of unselfish love. Helping the lost find their way home to their spiritual heritage of the one. And to find freedom, while the disguised sons of Belial. And their pawns, do everything possible to maintain their decadence and power, and maintain slavery, whether it be direct or by means of livelihood and social control. And they seek to destroy all those who would shine light into this world of darkness. All those who do not actively work for the light, are to varying degrees, pawns of the belial and darkness.